The Relative Strength Index indicator, the RSI, is a really popular one with plenty of traders. Uh, when they start trading, it might be one of the first indicators they put on their chart. But is the RSI actually any good? And if it is, is there a better way of using it than the way most people do? When we look at markets on this channel, I usually have um, an RSI at the bottom of the chart. You can see it down here. This is a 10-day RSI. So I thought it would be interesting to do a video just explaining this in a bit more depth and um, looking at a better way of using it rather than the, just the straightforward um, overbought, oversold uh, indicator. So in this video, I'll talk a bit, uh, quite a bit about the theory behind the RSI, what goes into it, and uh, then we'll come back onto the charts, look at things in more detail and see, well, actually, is the best way of using it as a simple overbought, oversold indicator? What sort of settings should we use? Um, does it work better on different markets? And also, um, what is divergence and why is this the best way of using the RSI? So more of this in a second. Let me talk a bit more about these topics, first of all. Hello, I'm David Jones from Capital.com. And I thought um, we take a bit of a breath from some of the excitement we'd had this week and uh, take a look at uh, an educational video, a trading strategy. So what we're going to cover in this video is that the popular indicator, the RSI, uh, looking at relative strength of the market, um, but not just looking at overbought, oversold, because I think there is a much better way of using this. And we'll talk about it more in the video as usual. I'll talk a bit about the theory behind it, then we'll jump um, onto the platform, look at things in more detail, and look at this in the real world, uh, in real markets. If you're not subscribed, if you could subscribe, it uh, helps support the channel and it means we can continue to push out uh, lots of varied videos in the weeks ahead, looking at individual markets, but also looking at uh, market strategy approaches just like this one. But let's get into it. Let's start talking uh, about the RSI, the theory, then we'll look at it in the real world. So the RSI is still a very popular indicator, um, probably one of the most, the most popular, perhaps one of the first things that people look at. It was developed in the 1970s and still clearly popular today. And it looks back um, at a market and compares the average rise on the days the market went up, so the up days, the number of points gained as an average on the up days, versus the average fall uh, on the days the market went down, so the average points drop. Uh, on the down days, then it expresses this as a percentage. With the RSI, we always have a value somewhere between zero and 100%. So this does give us a more objective reading as to whether a market is, is overbought, has gone up too far, or is oversold, has fallen too far, and is due a bounce. When it comes to the time period, I think 14 days is probably one of the textbook settings. Um, personally, I tend to use a 10-day RSI if you've seen our, our videos before, because for me, 10 days uh, is two trading weeks. Um, clearly, if you have a lower value RSI, let's say a five-day RSI, it'll be much more sensitive, uh, but arguably give uh, more false signals. A longer um, RSI, let's say a 25-day RSI, will be less sensitive to recent market movements, um, give you fewer signals, but also fewer false signals as well. I don't think there's a perfect solution here. Before we get into looking at this uh, in the real world, I want to spend a bit of time talking about divergence. Again, I've mentioned this in, in various videos we've done over the last few months, and I think it is arguably a more powerful use of the RSI. So rather than looking at the simple overbought, oversold, it's looking at the relation of the RSI to the market. And this is where we have the divergence, when the market is doing one thing, but the RSI is doing something else. So for example, let's say the market's rising and making higher highs, but the RSI moves into overbought, the market moves higher again, but the RSI makes a lower high. This is known as bearish divergence and can be a suggestion the uptrend is running out of steam. The flip side, of course, occurs as the market is falling. So the market falls to a low, the RSI hits a low, uh, then the market moves lower still, but the RSI doesn't follow through. The RSI makes a higher low. This is known as bullish divergence. So both of these divergences suggest that the current trend that we're seeing in the market may be faltering. So underneath what's going on, although the price is still making a trend, perhaps it's running out of steam. But I think as ever, the best way of seeing how this works is to apply it to lots of real markets. So we'll do that now. Let's jump back on the charts. So here's the RSI on the gold price. This is a, a daily chart of gold, and we've got a 10-day RSI here. So 
If we look, we've got the bands here on the side. So 70% above here, uh, the RSI is giving us an overbought uh, signal. And then down here below 30%, uh, we're getting our oversold signal. If we look at the last couple of signals on gold, it did spike very briefly, uh, November the 8th spiked up to overbought uh, and of course the market has sold off since then and if we go back to uh, September we can see the RSI was uh, oversold for a few days and it did mark uh, a short-term bottom for the market so it's done a pretty good, good job there uh, in signaling the turning points. But one of the drawbacks of the RSI and something we need to be aware of in strong trending markets if we go back let's stick with gold for now in strong trending markets like here, third week of July, when the price of gold went from $1,800 to uh, $2,075, the RSI goes overbought very quickly. So the RSI will move to an extreme uh, very quickly uh, in a market that's trending strongly, which is why I think you know we need to use it in conjunction with other approaches and why this, this idea of divergence could be better. But let's uh, talk more about that in a few minutes time. Let's see what effect changing the settings of the RSI has. So I'm going to click and change my settings to first of all a five day relative strength index. And as I'm clicking down, watch the RSI at the bottom of the chart. You can see that it's becoming much more sensitive. It's much more jumpy in terms of swings than the, the, the 10 day RSI. So we have it, it's almost pushed back to being um, oversold when we use it as a five-day setting. So we have more signals, but arguably um, more false signals because the market, the RSI is more sensitive. Let's try uh, pushing it up to say a 25-day RSI. So as I hold it down, you see the, uh, the RSI change at the bottom of the chart. So we have a much less volatile RSI. And if we actually take it up to 25 and take a look at it, you'll see that the last signal we had, we had to go back uh, to July and August of this year on gold. So it hasn't gone oversold on this move here, like the 10-day RSI did, or overbought up here, like the 10-day RSI did. So th there you can see um, the, the, the pros and cons of using uh, different days. As I say, 14-day is a popular textbook option. Me, I tend to stick to 10. There's no right or wrong here. It's just finding one that fits with your own particular trading style. And of course, if I now flip this over to an hourly chart, so again, we're sticking with gold for now. I've got a 10 RSI on here, but it's not looking at the last 10 days. It's now looking at the last 10 hours and looking at the points gained in the hour the market rose versus the points lost in the hour the market fell. So it's important to know when you change the, the frequency of your chart, change the period, then of course your RSI is going to change as well. So just one more market to look at before we get into divergences. And I think this is a pretty good one. This is um, Euro US dollar. So actually the last signal we had, because it has been somewhat sideways, Euro US dollar, we've got to go back to late September uh, on the Euro where we have um, the RSI going oversold and uh, the market eventually bottoming out around 116 and pushing higher. Then we have, of course, overbought up here in that strong trend in July. Um, so that was a bit premature, that signal. This overbought signal here ended up being a, a little bit better, which brings us to the topic of divergence. Okay, So I said that personally I prefer uh, divergences as a, as a better way of using the RSI because they don't happen very often. Uh, they don't work all the time, but they're a much less frequent signal. And I think they can add, add an extra dimension to our trading. Here's a great example in euro US dollar. So let's look at what's going on here. So the market, the euro against the dollar, pushes out to um, fresh highs for this recovery in July. So the RSI goes overbought, but um, we're not really concerned about this first movement uh, for divergence. We need to see what happens the second time. The market sells off for a few days, then pushes higher still. But look at the RSI. The RSI is making a much lower high. So this signal is known as bearish divergence. So the market has moved higher and then actually a little bit higher still into 120 at the end of uh, August, beginning of September. But the RSI is making lower highs. So it's a suggestion that perhaps that recovery, that, that strength in the market is running out of steam. So I suppose 
an aggressive strategy here would be to go short on the second peak here of the RSI with stops somewhere above. You may well have ended up getting stopped out if it was too tight. The market did push around 30 points higher, um, but this is the sort of setup we're looking at. Let's take a look at the flip side of uh, bearish divergence, which is, of course, bullish divergence. There's a great example here of bullish divergence in um, pairing against the dollar. So coming off the highs, the September highs around about, what, 134.80, the market pushes to a low, RSI goes oversold, um, market rallies, and then you can see here pushes lower still into the third week of September. But look at the RSI. It's as if our RSI is trying to form um, an uptrend. So the market's making lower lows, the RSI is making higher lows. So I think it can be a suggestion that perhaps it's running out of steam. So again, the signal here would have been to go long around what 127.40 and with a stop loss somewhere under that most recent low. Because by definition, if this is going to be a good bearish di bullish divergence signal, we don't want to see the previous lows uh, taken out. And that is a trade that would have worked uh, pretty well. At the moment on the RSI, we're not getting too much from that. Let's take a look at some other markets. So here's a stock market index. And I thought, um, let's take a look at a shorter term time frame. So we're looking at the hourly chart here, it's the Dow Jones index, so the you know very popular US stock market index. So looking for divergences, and really um, we had it here, and I think it's a good illustration. It doesn't work all the time, but when it does work, it can pay off a multiple of your risk. So we had uh, October the 28th, the market slips lower, slips lower again uh, October the 29th. Uh, we do have this bullish divergence, but the market did lurch lower once again, the next day. But once again, the RSI uh, is making higher lows. So we've really got almost a triple divergence going on here. So I think if you'd had a tight stop on that first signal, you may have lost money. If you'd have bought in on the, the next signal with a stop loss below the low, you caught the turn of what ended up, has ended, has ended up being so far, a pretty major rally off those end of October lows. So again, just to bang home the point, it doesn't work all the time. You need to have sensible stop losses uh, in place. But I think this idea of divergence is a really interesting and powerful one because it doesn't, it's not a common signal. And I think it's worth paying attention to as and when it happens. That's it for the RSI. Um, it's, it's no holy grail, like all technical indicators. Nothing works um, all the time. But I think using it in conjunction with other approaches, particularly when it comes to bullish and bearish divergences, it can give um, something of an extra dimension when it comes to your trading. So that's it from me and Capital.com. We'll leave things there. Good luck with your trading. For more trading videos just like this, please subscribe to our channel.